What's going on? This is Alan Brown, aka Billy the Kid. And today, we're gonna talk about Sire. Is it worth the investment? Well, I've got four, and I've had them for over three to four years. We'll get into that in just a second. Kick that intro. All right, so if you're watching this video, one of two things, or maybe even both. One, you're interested in Sire Basis. And you wanna know if it's even worth the money to go ahead and get the uh, second generation of the base. Or number two, you just wanna hear somebody else play a Sire Bass. Either case, cool. So, like I said, I got four of them. Um, I do have favorites among those four that I kind of reach for every single time. And then, uh, yeah, this is one of them here. This is a P7 that I actually swapped the neck with my vintage uh, V7. So it originally had a uh, rosewood fingerboard on it. And I kind of wanted to know what it looked like with a maple fingerboard. I kind of like the black uh, block inlays it had going on. So I swapped them. And then this pig guard is a tortoise shell. And I wrapped that with a, um, it's like a glow in the dark type deal. It's a solar uh, wrap. And I just threw that on there because I thought it would be pretty cool. And it kind of has a white on white type thing. It's pretty dope. Uh, but if you're getting into Sire Bases, there's, well, Marcus Miller is the real reason why you're here. And then let's, let's, just, let's just get into what you want to hear. Slap on a Sire Base, right? So let's do it. I swapped these strings maybe a month ago. So they aren't the freshest, but... That should suffice for what we gotta do here. Okay, tone all the way up between both pickups. Treble up, uh, mid in the middle for now. And then uh, bass all the way up. Here we go. So, when you get a sour bass, you want to slap on it. You can get that Marcus Miller tone, kinda, and then uh, it just it just keeps on going. So uh, let's mess with the mid. Take it all the way back to the other side. Okay. And that's dope because you can change it up for whatever room that you're actually playing in. Uh, so you can be more present in the mids and stuff like that. And uh, here's what it does with the mids all the way up. And I go from the front to the back. Thank you. 
Oh yeah. Now, problems with this bass. With every bass, especially uh, active electronics, they get a little trash in the pot. So from time to time, uh, I have like it crackles a little bit from time to time when I turn up the volume. I don't know if you can hear that. So how you get past that is literally what I'm doing right now. You just kind of work the volume until that dust or whatever is there goes away. And that works on pretty much all of the pots. So yeah, that's kind of it. Uh, another thing is the uh, hardware on the My Vintage V7 is kind of oxidizing. And I never played with it in any humid weather like talking about, but it's kind of rusting. And I'm trying to figure out a way to stop that other than just swapping out the parts, which if you are going to do a modification like has happened to my M2, this is a great platform to mine from. They don't cost that much. So it isn't really that big a deal to say, swap out the preamp with something that works a little bit better for you. If you don't like all these knobs and options, um, swap out the tuning keys with uh, lighter tuning keys to help the dive. And does it dive? This is a five string, but I think the four string is a little bit more balanced, but yeah. This is also a first generation. And uh, so the rolled edges and all of that pretty stuff is first generation. So all that, the rolled edges and stuff like that, it's not on here and I don't really, I don't really care. Um, but yeah, so that's the thing. Um, everything else, oh, look at screws. Screws are starting to rust or whatever, so I'm gonna have to swap those out. Uh, but yeah, other than that, $500 well spent. That's when I got it for. I got it for $549, I believe. The original P, uh, P7. Just to prove that. It says V7 on the headstock there. So, uh, yeah, I just swapped the next because I just wanted this to be maple. And it looks good, sounds good. Whatever. So, that is my sire discussion. So, years after having it, was it worth the time? Was it worth the money? Yes, absolutely. If you need a workhorse base or you want a mining base, I'll definitely check these out. This isn't a paid infomercial or nothing. This is me actually talking because I own four of them and I've owned six in my life. Uh, the other two were bought off the stage after the gig was over with. So, um, yeah, so this is, this. I like the base. I don't reach for it as much because I have my own signature base now. It kind of takes elements from this in a different package. But if I didn't have those BTK bases, I would definitely still be running these for real all the time. I can take it to a gig and if it gets beat up, I'm not too pissed off. I am mad, but I'm not too mad about it. It's worth the money, or at least it's worth going to a guitar center or somewhere and trying to put your hands on one. It's well worth it. The tone of versatility is there. I would suggest you check out the P7 so you at least have a P tone and you have kind of a J tone as well. Versatility. And uh, yeah. So till next time, I've been Alan Brown, aka Bullet Kid. Y'all be easy.